Good afternoon. I just returned from the scene of a horrific accident that led to a high level anxiety all the way from Western New York to Albany to Washington. But before I describe the details, I want to be very, very clear to Americans and New Yorkers. At this time, there is no indication of a terrorist attack. Let me repeat that. At this time, there is no indication of a terrorist-involved attack here at the Rainbow Bridge in Western New York. At 11.27 this morning, a car going at a very high rate of speed crashed into a median at Niagara Street just minutes from here. It's in the city of Niagara Falls, near one of the border crossings into Canada, the Rainbow Bridge. There are four border crossings here in Western New York. This is one of the busiest crossings, not just in Western New York, but along the entire U.S.-Canadian border. And it happens on the busiest travel day of the year. So naturally, in a time of heightened alert, everyone sprang into action. It crashed into a Customs and Border Patrol booth, and the car and the booth immediately exploded. Burst into flames. I saw the video of an airborne vehicle that was absolutely surreal. You actually had to look at it and say, was this generated by AI? Because it was so surreal to see how high in the air this vehicle went, and then the crash, and the explosion, and the fire. That video will be released very shortly. As I said, we are not aware of any threats to this area, but I state the caveat that the investigation is ongoing. If you can imagine, this vehicle basically incinerated. Nothing is left but the engine. The pieces are scattered over 13, 14 booths. So it is a large scene, and it's going to take a lot of time for our federal law enforcement partners, who are with me here today and I'll identify to be able to piece together the real story, to identify the make of the car. Obviously, there is not a license plate. I've been briefed by law, law enforcement for the last hour. New York State Police, Colonel Andy Crow, Colonel Allen, other law enforcement officials. I've been joined by Andy Bowker, who is the Special Agent in Charge of the Customs and Border Patrol. I was also briefed by the SAC from the FBI. Also was on the phone with Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas. The FBI Director Christopher Bray has reached out. The White House has reached out. My staff has been in communication with all of them. I spoke with Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand, Congressman Higgins, local law enforcement, as well as local elected officials, because the world is watching to find out what happened here. And again, at a time when there's such high anxiety, stress levels are already high. And we've been on heightened alert since October 7th. That's why it's so important for me to stand here and tell the world based on what we know at this moment. And again, anything can change. There is no sign of terrorist activity with respect to this crash. We've identified that this is a local individual, a Western New Yorker. Two individuals died in the, in the vehicle. The Border Patrol individual working in the booth was injured. The booth literally protected that individual. They went to the hospital with minor injuries and have been released. There is also, again, the busiest travel day of the year, there is a major disruption. And first of all, our cross-border travel. Right now, the Rainbow Bridge will remain closed while law enforcement continues investigation. Again, this is a large, widely scattered scene, and we're trying to identify all the elements to make sure that there is no unforeseen uh, situations that we need to address before we can open again to the public. We're going to make sure the public is safe before they go back on the Rainbow Bridge. Also make sure the, the structural integrity of the booths, also very important. Our state DOT will be involved in that as well. The Whirlpool Bridge and Lewiston Queensland Bridge opening early this evening, probably open by now. Can anybody confirm that? Yeah. We're open now. Okay. They are open now. There's been a lot of people trying to get across. I appreciate that. 
Uh, the Peace Bridge, which was open, is already op reopened half an hour ago. For those traveling by train, unfortunately, Amtrak has temporarily suspended its cross-border service between New York State and Canada. And the Buffalo Airport, despite early reports, the Buffalo Airport was never closed and everything is normal. Domestic flights are still active. Uh, there has been no cessation in service there. What I want to do at this time is extend my extreme gratitude to all of our partners, Customs and Border Patrol, Homeland Security, FBI, our state police, local sheriffs, Monagra County, Erie County, all stepped up to assist in trying to identify what exactly transpired here beginning at 11.27 a.m. this morning. They gave up their time from their families. They showed up. They reminded us that there are people who put on a uniform every single day, put themselves in harm way. The people out there on that bridge, in the immediate aftermath of what happened, unknown, the source, the cause of this explosion, were out there doing their jobs. So I want to pause to give them just the gratitude of a governor and 20 million New Yorkers who sleep better at night because of their willingness to do this. They run toward danger. They should be with their families today, but they will not be. This investigation will go on for a number of days, and that's why we will not have any further answers uh, at this time as to the individuals involved, the deceased, uh, any motivation, and there's a lot, of, a lot of unanswered questions. But at this time, we just need to dial down the temperature right now, and that's what I plan to do as governor, just let everybody know all is well. We're investigating. More information could arise, but based on the preliminary investigation, no sign of terrorist involvement in the horrific explosion that occurred here in Western New York. Any questions? Dr. Vogel, can you explain what you're basing that determination on, that there was no terrorist activity here, and instead calling this a horrific accident? That's based on my briefings with uh, experienced law enforcement, with the FBI, Homeland Security, and the P Customs of Border Protection. Uh, they, are, uh, they brought experts. They're still analyzing this. But there's been no indication based on any online threats, anyone taking credit for anything, all the usual areas you look to identify whether or not there's a group involved at this time. At this time, you hear me say this at this time a dozen times because it is still unfolding. But I didn't want to leave the public un with a lot more anxiety than they need to have at this time. So there's just, I just want to be perfectly clear there is no evidence to show at this time that this was a terrorist activity. There is no evidence at this time that this was a terrorist activity. And that's what I want to make very clear to the public, just to calm everybody down. This is really important because uh, based on what's happening in other parts of the world, everybody is on edge. And this is an international border. And we've always felt the vulnerability there. But this was a, a you know, I won't call it an accident. It's not been determined to be an accident. Uh, you don't know whether the, intent, the driver was intentional in how they drove. We do not know that. All I know is there was a horrific accident, well, I won't call it an accident, a horrific incident, a crash, an explosion, loss of life, but at this time, no known terrorist connection. Governor, we saw agents canvassing the neighborhood, specifically near the casino and on Niagara Street. Is there a reason why, or sources are telling us this couple may have left the casino and were on their way to Toronto? I can't confirm. Uh, where the car originated at this, at this time, but there is suspicion that the in vehicle may have originated in, uh, in that vicinity. I'm sorry, can you just clarify of Niagara Falls or where that car may have originated? Within the city. Of Niagara Falls? Not saying that it's a local resident. I'm saying that it was, it's, a, it's a Western New York resident who was most likely in that vicinity prior to the high speed, high rate of speed, extraordinarily high rate of speed that led to the crash into the median that sent the vehicle airborne. And when you see this video, your jaw will drop in disbelief at how this went so high over a, an eight foot high fence. Uh, it's rather extraordinary. Time for one more. Can you just walk us through the idea, the decision to close all borders, all border crossings in Western New York? What went into that? And, and Walk us through the sheer magnitude of that kind of decision. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the representative from the Customs and Border Patrol, special a agent in charge. Uh, that would be Aaron Bowker. Yeah. Would you like to address the decision made to close the border? Thank you, Governor. Uh, I think anytime you have an incident, 
like this, um, you want to take an abundance of precaution to protect not only the staff and personnel, but also the public. Mm -hmm. So you make a quick decision like that, and then, uh, and then to go back based on the totality of circumstances, working with law enforcement partners to reopen, we are reopened. Can you walk us through uh, the man who was first that agent? Was it a customs agent or was it a board protection? It was a customs and board protection officer. Um, out of an abundance of precaution, based on some minor injuries, went to the hospital, was treated and released. And what have your conversations with that person been? Uh, I'm not going to get any other further details at this time. A veteran of the force or how long? Just going to leave it at that it was an employee. Have you ruled okay. out suicide? Talking I'm sorry? Have you ruled out suicide? It's an ongoing suicide? investigation, so we're not going to say anything else at this time. Did you, say, did you say how many people were injured at the scene? Just the one or was there multiple injuries? From our employees, it was one employee. I think that's something, I think it's something we should be grateful for. When you look at the scale of the scene, of how far the pieces of this vehicle exploded and scattered, the fact that other people in other vehicles, and there's been some damage to other vehicles, I mean, you can imagine the lines were long, many booths. And this is not an isolated late night occurrence. This is the busiest travel day of the year at 11.27 in the morning. People were on the road, so it was a very congested area and thank God there was no one else injured. It could have been much more uh, cataclysmic. And so, but thank you all for coming out. I appreciate uh, your attention and helping us let the public know uh, to dial back uh, the anxiety associated with this event. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.